it's at the end of the day, it's getting kind of late, and I just had this pop into my mind that I should cover it. Yeah. There you go. Christmas tree still up. Sometimes we leave it up till my birthday in February. <laughs> um, difficult conversations. That's the that's the conversation I want to have right now. Just real briefly, difficult conversations. There's actually a book out of it. I forget the guy's name. It's just called Difficult Conversations. And that is, it teaches you how to have a difficult conversation, the topics that we don't like to broach, the things we don't like to talk about, the things we don't like to bring up. And many times we hope they just work themselves out. And probably by experience, you know, that's not what happens. It's like a sore that you hope goes away, but it gets infected and starts festering. And then after a while, it takes a lot more to, uh, to get rid of it. That's what I want to talk to you about. So a lot of times what we do is, I'm going to relate this first first example is going to be uh, when you fire someone, if you have to let someone go or break a relationship like that. Typically, it's like, uh, well, uh, Jane, you've been really good. really appreciate all the hard work you've done for our company, and, and you really helped us a lot, and uh, it was really good working with you. I really appreciate the way you get along with everyone. Now, Jane's wondering what's up. And then you say, but we just really... Your work just hasn't been up to par lately, and you know, with the way things are going in the business, we're going to have to let you go. Well, why did you say all those nice things at first and get her hopes up? And then when you say something like, we're going to let you go, in fact, in today's corporate world, especially if you have a company that has more than 50 employees, you would have just gotten yourself into a problem there because the rules are different when you fire someone when you're a larger company, at least in the United States. And if the woman's over 40, you have other considerations there too. So you, it's legally not even a good thing to build someone up and tell them how good they are and then say we don't need you anymore. It really doesn't serve any purpose. When I've had to let people go, and believe me, I hated it. I didn't like to bring up the conversation at all. But when I had to let someone go, it'd be like, hello, Jane, thanks for spending a few moments with me. Uh, the way things are going, we're going to have to let you go. Cold turkey, just like that. You start off just like that. Now, you might want to have an exit interview. You might want to talk to her a little bit afterwards. Geez, I'm really sorry. I hope that you'll be okay. Or, you know, you might have some kind of a softening that you'll do. But that's a conversation after you treat everything real bluntly and you let them go. When you're breaking up with someone. Oh, you're such a sweet guy or girl. I really appreciate, you know, my mom likes you, blah, 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 blah. But I don't want to see you anymore. What's the purpose of that? You really confuse the person and you don't really give a clear message. In fact, if you build the person up too much and then you say, I have to let you go or I'm breaking up, you put in their mind that you have a lot of value with them and now they might want to try to save the position and now it becomes like a, a sticky wicket, something you can't get away from. The person's going to try to talk you back into the relationship that they thought you had earlier. So it's best when you have difficult situations to deal with that you're really blunt. And that goes for getting refunds. That goes for, you know, somebody fix your car incorrectly. Uh, any situation, uh, professional situations as well, whether it's an accountant or lawyer, uh, customers, might as well be blunt right up front. Save both of you the pain, the agony, and the confusion. It's confusing when you're not clear with someone. So my advice is for difficult conversations, for those things that you don't really want to deal with, deal with them. Make the decision right up front, sort of like a doctor might do if you had an infected something on your skin, rather than say, well, let's put some cream on it, let's wait two weeks, I don't know, let's see, why don't we wait, actually you're healthy otherwise, you should, cuts it right out. That's what I do little cancer things, I had one on my shoulder. I think, well, maybe it's going to get better, and maybe it's going to get better, and that's what I told myself, and it got worse. It got so bad, he went, mm. you know when a doctor looks at it, he goes, hmm, starts humming, that's bad news. Uh, cut it out right away. So cut those things out right away. This is a new year, you're starting 2019. So use this, use this as a practical way of dealing with things that you don't want to deal with. Be blunt, be honest, don't sugarcoat it, and just be, and be fair. You don't have to diss someone. You don't have to say anything negative. In fact, it's best not to say anything negative to the person. Besides, you weren't that good anyway. No, you don't do that. Just be really blunt, stick to the facts. They'll appreciate it in the long run, and you'll do better off if you, if you treat it that way. All right? So <laughs> I don't want you to start off your 2019 on a bad like a bad note thinking, oh, who do I want to cut out of my life? But there might be some people and you might be some contracts, you might have some customers, you might have some relationships that, that you'd do better off without. And if you've been thinking about it, chances are there's something there you need to deal with. And you've been avoiding it, like I would naturally tend to do too, and not want to bring it up. But I'm going to tell you something, bring it up, deal with it, be cold-hearted in a sense, be blunt, 
be fair, and you'll do better in the long run. That's how you handle difficult topics. Thanks very much.